this is a funny movie, it's an entertaining movie. At its heart, there's a serious, you know, there's a very serious uh, dimension to this, which is a, a man's illness, right? And I hope I'm not bringing the mood down by asking, <laughs> like, how is Jonathan? How is his health? Is he alive? And, uh, and how, what was his reaction to the film? There was a lot of questions yes. in that one question. Uh, Jonathan is alive, thank God. Um, uh, he's, he's not, you know, he's not doing uh, well, but he, he lives, so we're very grateful for that. Um, and yeah, uh, his reaction to the film, that's, that's a whole story that we'll try to be brief with, but I was very nervous to show him because we were filming the movie for two and a half years and I, I didn't show him any single piece of anything. So for two and a half years, he had no idea what we were doing and I was very nervous, of course, to show him this because I think it's pretty honest, it shows him and, his, and Anna, his wife, in a very honest way. Um, but ultimately, uh, he, he was pretty convinced that he would hate it, and he said he would shut it down if he didn't like it. And we nervously drove out to Vegas. I brought my whole team, and he loved it. Him and his, uh, his wife just like laughed throughout the whole screening. It was the best screening of that movie that'll ever happen other than tonight, so thank you guys for uh, being slightly better audience um, that's than good Jonathan. To, that's, it's good to hear that. And. Um, convey my best wishes for his health. Like for, for me personally, yeah. like my personal reaction, I never actually doubted that he was ill. Like he just seemed so ill like in his face and stuff yeah. that I, I kind of bought the idea of his illness. So I'm the I guess I'm, that I'm makes dick. you kind of a dick. <laughs> yeah. uh, better that you should I'll say. take it, you yeah. know. Uh, you know, we're going to go to our Twitter questions in a minute, but I, uh, I'd, I'd like to kick, kick things off with a, with a question from in here. Uh, our London, our London cinema uh, centre. So, uh, can we, can we, any, does anyone here want to ask a question to Ben, the director? Okay, we have got someone down here. But, oh, first, sorry, no, uh, sorry, you next. <laughs> but first off, I, I just want to congratulate you on the film. It was really entertaining. Um, just want to know, were the processes that you used in the making of this film <laughs> similar to the processes that you used in Man on Wire and Searching for Sugar Man? Well, um, no, those were Academy Award winning movies and I've, uh, this is the first documentary I've ever made, so uh, it's a kind of run and gun process. So <laughs> to answer your question, no. But uh, Simon Chin, everybody, executive producer of the movie, why don't you come on up? <laughs> Should we go to our first Twitter questions? Or, was Simon, well, was this something you to wanted Simon. to say? Okay, get Simon, come on, let's get Simon. I again. just, uh, looking at it again, watching it again, it, it just strikes it. me what a work of genius it is. Ah. Well, thank Didn't, you. do you all think? <laughs> but no, <laughs> no <laughs> honestly, I mean, uh, you know, it, it is very rare, and as I think you, Louis, will attest, uh, to be given the opportunity to provide an ending to someone's film. And we, we've both probably been in a situation where we've been struggling with that. So, uh, so that, was, that was a pleasure. You gifted me an ending because <laughs> I didn't know where I was going with it. So, so you. sincere question. Um, the, the, so you had some association with, the, with project number two, right? Right. Um, the, but let's, it, but let's I wasn't get into aware that. of it. But you weren't really aware of it. I think Jonathan... Uh, your cousin and collaborator had had, had some dealings yes. with the other team. Oh, oh, what what was your first exposure uh, to this project? How did it come onto your radar? And 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 how did you make the decision to get on board? Well, I, I guess my first exposure to something to do with this project was this was this article that I read. That weirdly, and I kind of look back and I think, why didn't I sort of pursue that? Why didn't I? I mean, I was curious. I just I literally thought it was some weird error and I was busy and I just didn't really sort of pursue it but then I got an email from Ben uh, kind of out of the blue but you had I think tried to email me about six months previously oh you remember that I thought well, you, you told I think you told me about that oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and your email was I would say a, s a subtle deception I now realize um, in that you were basically saying you were coming to London to interview an, a number of filmmakers about a documentary about documentary ethics. <laughs> which, it, like, which this movie is a documentary about documentary ethics. So, like, is, I, but you I, weren't coming to London to interview a number of filmmakers. I, I didn't say I was coming to London for many people. I said, oh, I'm pursuing many people and I'm going to be in London. I'm not so sure about that. Go to that. the tape, go to the email. <laughs> Anyway, like I did with so, yeah, the first <laughs> I kind of knew about the project 
really was, was when you asked me that question in the room. And, you know, in spite of my calm exterior, <laughs> I was panicking inside. I thought I'd been set up. And to some degree, maybe you were. I don't know. Maybe I was. But yeah, yeah. no, I, I, yeah, there was a little bit of sep little bit of deception to get into your, get into the door, and uh, I don't regret it. Look, we, this worked out. So, <laughs> so, 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 my cynical, slightly cynical uh, production mind was thinking, well, I think this could be, this interview might be a semi reenactment of a, right. of an agreement that you'd already made. No, no, right? it wasn't. But it actually Does it wasn't play like that. Listen, it, it <laughs> no, played pe perfectly pe in the people room. People have said it. People have said, oh, you, you know, this was, the whole thing was a conspiracy right. between us. Um, I mean, it's actually a conspiracy <laughs> between Jonathan and I against you and, and the audience. So, we, right. so in the no, moment, it's very, this is a very much a documentary. That's for real. And in the moment when Ben asks you, would you consider coming on board? Yeah. And yeah. you look thoughtful and yeah. physical. That's yeah. a real moment. Yeah, it's a real moment. I actually then went on to say, I'll, I'll happily look at a cut. Yes. Which I, yeah, I, which I duly did. Yeah. Uh, you know why I like that is because I had worried that if it was set up, then it would have been your decision to put the Oscars and the other awards <laughs> yeah. no, behind <laughs> you <laughs> during the interview. Isn't that so amazing? Like, like, I know Simon's got an ego, but I don't think <laughs> he'd insist on having yeah. the Oscars in shot when he's being interviewed. No. I, th I think you must, you must have experienced when dealing with real life, sometimes things are just so incredibly perfect the way that they kind of fall off the yeah. truck. That like l real life is often either funnier or more you know just weirder than you would expect. Yeah. So you, that, that you, you did rearrange the I don't awards think, though, didn't you? I don't think we bit. did. <laughs> I think we chose for you to sit there and me to sit, but they were there, right? Uh, maybe there's actually. no crime in having your Oscar in your office. <laughs> uh, that that that's fine. Where's the other one? I, there was only one, and maybe a BAFTA. That's the a other home. ones with John. <laughs> cool. uh, so so documentary number. Two, the the one who the guys are, pisc are pixelated throughout, right? And and I understand that he's a little annoyed. Is that is that correct? And documentary number is four, number three is friendly, like the the chainsaw guy. <laughs> we love him. Like that's great. We should all be. Uh, he's so relaxed about like, you know, fine, we're all made. He could make a hundred documentaries. That's his right, <laughs> yeah. right? Which is beautiful. Number four who is Nikki. Yes. And she doesn't even want her name and likeness or even her voice used. Well, her yeah. But by the way, number four is actually number one. So Nikki, who right, time wise, yes. yeah, 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 that's fine. And the, yeah, but so that's we don't really need to get confused. Yeah, the whole thing. Um, well, yeah, Nikki, Nikki uh, gave her footage to me, and she's she's very happy with the movie. Um, Why did she not want her name and likeness? No, her name is in, but she didn't want to be interviewed on camera. She didn't want her likeness. Uh, she didn't understand the angle that I was going for. Neither did I. So she wanted to stay away from it. That's Though after seeing this movie, she's uh, a big supporter. Her name supporter. is just Nikki. Uh, uh, no, there, there's a last name. Is she's it? got, a, it's like Madonna. No, she's got a last name as well. Um, uh, Chad, Mad Chad Taylor, I would love to just give a, a round of applause. Yeah, he, he, is, God, he is a really, really incredible guy. Like, How's his project going? Um, he, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly the status of it, but he was, we invited him out to our, our premiere uh, at Sundance earlier this year, and I, we flew him out, and he was a part of our team, and. Uh, he did the Q&A with us, and then after I heard him talking to one of my producers and said, like, man, I love the movie. It's like seeing it finished really kind of makes me want to, like, finish up mine. So <laughs> there might be a number three coming. And I know we, ha we had a conversation, because I know you were very keen that Chad would juggle chainsaws outside, outside. the theater. <laughs> yeah, right. you know, just to I wanted, yeah, I wanted our premiere to have Chad outside and juggling. But happen. number two is annoyed. Should we talk about that just for a minute, just to deal with that? Yeah, let's, let's, let's deal with that. Um, yeah, number two is absolutely, they hate me. They hate this movie, and I get it. I can empathize with them. Um, we won, <laughs> you know, like we, we finished our movie. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, uh, I don't know, what, what, what they can feel I like they, what They feel like you kind of over, you, you, you got more exposure, more success, you made a better movie. Because they made that, they finished their movie too, right? Yes, you, you, I'm sure they don't think we made a better movie. I'm sure they think that this is a, you know, a very problematic movie some of those notes I might agree with, I don't know. But um, yeah, overall, uh, yeah, they, they feel slighted, um, and I'm sorry they do. I, do. I do want everyone to see our movie and go please watch theirs. Uh, it's on. It's free on YouTube. You can you can check it out. You can't, but you can't see the name of it. What, you know, you seem to blur out the name no, of I that movie. No, I think. Oh yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> An earlier cut. We, yeah. No, there was a little bit of negotiations. What was of, it called? What's their one called? Uh, well, if 
I'm, yeah, I've talked about this, and it's very well no known in the press. There's no reason why you can't uh, it's, called, it's called Always Amazing, and they hate us. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings me, I've got to ask this question, because I, I couldn't ask this. So, so someone's tweeted in the question, Ben, what would your reaction have been if a fifth film crew emerged, led by Louis Theroux? <laughs> <laughs> Open arms. Like, uh... <laughs> I think we yeah, all had a, to just literally clear clear the path. But, yeah, I think yeah. we would have to. I would offer up my footage we, for a, we'd have to a really nice admit speed. defeat at that point. On a serious, <laughs> thank you for that sarcasm. The, on a serious <laughs> note, uh, uh, you know, one of the beautiful things is is the fact that I think we've all been in documentaries in the position of um, making a film and then realizing there's another team there. Early on, I made a documentary. It was an episode of Weird Weekends, was what it was about swingers, and literally there was another guy, and he he would hide. In, in, like we, we'd arrive for interviews and he'd kind of hide in the next room to, to, to find out what we were interviewing mm. our, the contributors about. I mean, the, the level of paranoia can be frightening. Um, <laughs> on, 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 on the next question, which also I like, um, this is from someone called Sam Jones. What was meth like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I, think, I think to answer that question, I kind of have to go to my my stock way of answering that question, which is to uh, maybe not answer it, but to uh, answer it in the way that the, the, there's a huge theme of the movie um, uh, of me searching for truth, right? Trying to determine what's real, what's not, what's truth versus what's illusion. And at the, you know, the movie's over now, and there's still things that I still don't exactly know what the real truth was. So to answer that question, we still don't know. What meth was like? Yeah, we just. See, when I watched the movie the first time, I was like, I was like, oh, that's a shame. Uh, he, he didn't kind of, like, I, I love the idea that, oh, we, I'm going to make a condition of access uh, that you have to take the meth, you know, that, that Jonathan says that to you. And then I was like, this is going to be a great scene. You're going to take meth all night, and we're gonna, he's going to open up and talk about stuff. And then, I, full disclosure, I felt a tiny bit cheated when you go to the next morning. And then when I watch it this time, I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't think he took the meth. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of the power of the cut too, you know. That's a turn, uh, edit, 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 editing thing. <laughs> Less is more. Nuance. Less is more. So you took the meth, and he told you a bunch of stuff, but you decided not to use is it. Is it going to be tough to get out of the country? <laughs> no. I think meth is legal in the UK, isn't it? Someone, someone actually someone told, told me. me that. Yeah. Was there question? Uh, was there ever a point you wanted to throw in the towel and walk away? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm, of course, I'm sure there there was. Uh, I know it. But I, um, I'm a. Uh, at a certain point, we were so far into the process, and there was my money spent and time spent, and I, I just it, it's. I'm a pretty persistent person, so I I didn't know where I was going, but I knew I had to get to an end. So, um, I think those those. Uh, Fears and things you just have to power through and, and, and finish. And Were you financing it yourself? At the very beginning, yeah. For like a year and a half, I was just making it on my own. And then uh, we had edited, I edited together you know, a bit of an assembly, and we, we were lucky to get financiers, and, and the rest is history. Um, Simon, on you, like you've done enough docs to have been familiar with a similar situation. Uh, just from my own account, when we did the Scientology movie we, we did together, uh, Alex Gibney was working on a doc at the same time. Yeah. You've mm -hmm. also had uh, a similar experience uh, with Whitney Houston, where Nick Broomfield was making a doc, yeah. and then you were making a Whitney Houston doc. Those are the two I know about. That was exactly the moment that Ben came to talk to me, actually. So it was very, uh, shall we say, resonant for me. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, so, so has that happened? A, has that happened? Is that like, because that's just the years that we've sort of worked yeah, together. Yeah. Is that kind of quite a common situation in your world? Well, I think, and, I think it's become increasingly common. I mean, it, it used not to be. I mean, I guess when you know I was involved in Man on White, yeah, there was a bit of competition, but it wasn't like <laughs> like it is now. And yeah, I mean, you know, literally, I mean, I wouldn't say every project, but you know, a lot, maybe most projects that I do. I mean, there's a project that I'm working on at the moment that that at one point there were literally five other competing projects, you know. Um, and yeah, it's difficult to sleep at night, <laughs> to be honest. And how do you decide whether to fish or cut bait? It's a really good question. I don't know, I don't, honestly don't know the answer to that, but I guess, you know, I, I suppose if you have a sense that, that you're, you have no chance of being first out of the gate, I mean, with our, with our Scientology film, I mean, I, you know, I suppose, 
we knew we weren't gonna gonna get there first. We knew that Alex Gibney was. I guess our only, you know, sort of the only chance we had at that point was to make a film that was weird mm. and very, very different. Um, and I think we did that, didn't we? Mm. <laughs> For better or worse. Is that why you guys called it my Scientology movie to separate it? It's yours and the other one's Gibney's. Well, that was one of the reasons. I like. Sure. It. Yeah. I mean, I think if you. I, I called mine the, like there's no one else. Yeah. Just to really. If you'd it. said my, I think my lawyers would have gone <laughs> in touch with you. Um, uh, it's, a, it's like, I think if, just to answer my own question, I am here. Like, in, in a sense, if you can't go, <laughs> right, like, yeah, what, uh, shall I just do it from now on? Um, <laughs> really, so it's like feeling of, um, if you can't be definitive, then be personal, right? So that's, that's sort of my watchword. Like, in, in ter- like I, Alex Gibney can talk about the history of, Scientology, but he can't talk about how I interacted right. with um, Scientology goons. That's what I tell myself as I'm crying into my pillow uh, <laughs> late at night. Um, yeah. If Simon had said, no, I, I don't want, you know, who the fuck are you? Uh, get out of my office. I thought this was about documentary ethics. Did you get both of my Oscars in shot? <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the ending then? Were you pursuing other direction? Yes, yeah. I think going into a lot, uh, every pretty much everything we had, okay, if it goes this way, we can do this. If it goes this way. Um, the, yeah, if, if Simon would have said no, I would have still, which I totally expected, by the way. 99% sure Simon was going to say no. The 1% happened. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, I was going to go back to Jonathan, go to Detroit, and have that whole, you know, that scene unfold where I would have, uh, I would have told Jonathan, hey, I flew to London, I tried to get the guy on board, he said no, I'm sorry, and I thought that would be an olive branch enough for him to know at least I tried, I flew across you know, the Atlantic. So luckily we didn't have to do that. Um, but there was also the idea, where, because it's so much about trickery and magic and illusion that I could have also, option two was, go tell, go to Detroit, tell Jonathan that, hey, we got Simon Chin on board to executive produce, and that would have been true because we would have just gone, gone and gotten another guy named Simon Chin <laughs> to sign a contract, and we would have pranked Jonathan, which is... Did you know that? I had no idea. <laughs> well, no, we, yeah. Honestly, that's, that's, that's an extraordinary... Uh, yeah, it would have been a big... Slightly insulting. <laughs> well, like any Simon Chin would yeah. do. There is another Simon Chin, actually. I think he's an urban planner. I looked up. There is plenty throughout the world. <laughs> there are a load of it's Simon Chin. That's also two, interesting. The two ends is tough, tougher than the one end. But. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, like, uh, just to revisit the issue of the illness, right? So is it, what is up with the fact that he was given a year to live? That does, on the face of it, seem odd. And then he's still alive five years later. I don't want to be macabre about that. But what is his but condition that means that he's, he's lived uh, so much longer than expected? Um, well, it's cardiomyopathy, which is a heart disease. Um, but yeah, yeah, well, I, again, luckily he is. Uh, we wouldn't want it any other way. Um, but yeah, I think the question ultimately becomes, like, what came first? Was it the heart disease and then kind of made worse by the meth? Or did the meth actually cause the heart disease? These are things that I don't exactly know the specifics, but it, you know, it could, it could be the drugs, wow. more than likely. Well, the, the meth is actually good for his heart condition? No, well, well that's what he's, he's, he's contradicted himself. He said, <laughs> I think it's what's keeping me alive. Uh, and my doctor, he kept on saying, like, yeah, my doctor knew, knows I'm doing it. And he's like, keep on doing what you're doing, so that means keep on smoking meth. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, I have a feeling it definitely um, is certainly... It might have caused the whole thing. It's cer- certainly making it making it worse. I would believe. Hand on heart. I, again, m- apologies for this question, but was there? This is like the documentary maker's dilemma, right? Was there any part of you that was thinking it will be good for the film if he does die? In reality, no, absolutely not. But I knew it was it was absolute. It was totally an option. It, you, you don't start making a documentary about someone who can literally drop dead at any moment and and you know you have to plan for that there was footage of jonathan and i talking about that very blatantly early on like where he was driving and i was filming and he was like if i started dying right now you wouldn't put down the camera and i said you know what i absolutely would and how dare you even you know say that to me uh and he was like but i i admit it i would probably put it down but keep recording and see what we got <laughs> so you, that's you like, get the audio and then you can yeah uh, that's hard the, that's half the you know, with text, yeah. 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 Uh, d- Real. 
No, I know, but it, it is that that is these these are good questions about I think documentary filmmaking and the philosophy behind it and the concept of when does it be when does it become exploitation? When when is it no longer like I don't know supporting uh, a subject and, and presenting them and helping their legacy live on? And when does it well, but become and, and also the, exploiting their the death? The whole thing of oh I I've heard about this terrible thing that's happening in a place. Yeah. And I'd, I'd like to document it. Right. And then you arrive at the place and it's not happening. And then your honest Being reaction upset. is like, oh no. The, the, the terrible thing isn't happening. Like, I hope it happens, you know, in the next week while we're here. Like, I hope they take the drug or I hope they shoot each other. Which, yeah. which is, uh, you, you think, you're aware that it's a horrendous thing to think. And you, 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 the thought process is that this is for the greater good somehow. Although it's probably just about your own ego and vanity. That you you don't want to have wasted your time. Anyway, uh, I was actually involved in a project once where we you know, we, were, we wanted to go and follow the people who were sort of these um, Orthodox Jews who used to go in be the first responders at a suicide bombing, which was a terrible project to be involved in. And we sent a director out there, and he was out there for five weeks. This was during the Second Intifada when there was a it had been a bombing, you know, every few weeks, and it, it coincided with an outbreak of of peace. In, in the region, um, and you know, it was it was very very weird. I don't think I'd ever do something like that the again. Peace well, listen, this the is way. like our little conclave <laughs> because I went to Philadelphia, and we'd been told it was like an incredibly high crime city, like one of the highest homicide rates, and we planned it all through autumn, and we arrived late in the winter and the run up to Christmas. And what no one had said was that it gets incredibly cold, and it's too cold to be outside committing crimes. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? And like, it was only like, you'd have to be the most dedicated <laughs> drug dealer to be out dealing drugs. And you know, it was you, you're not gonna get into beef about being on someone's block because you're the only guy out there like shivering in one of those Canada goose kind of, uh, you know, fleeces or whatever. And, and it was, it, I, I, I was like, oh, when are they gonna, like, that's so terrible that the crimes have gone down. Like, we need more crime. <laughs> For God's sake, get out there and start committing crimes. Um, <laughs> And that's, that's, the, that's the kind of vampiric uh, postures that documentary making forces you into. Did your dad like the film? Gina Morris wants to know. Uh, by the way, my dad is in the audience. Well, there so we, we go. An applause. There he is. So can we, can we, get, can we get a mic so he can answer for himself? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thumb up. Yeah, get, uh, there's a mic. Wonderful, thank you. What's the verdict? Yes, I love the film. I love the film. Five stars? Five stars? Absolutely. Out of ten? <laughs> <laughs> what else? Give my dad another. Give me. Give him I'm a real Louis. I'm just looking for best supporting father. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> good work. How are we doing for time? We we good? Six minutes. It's gonna be a long six minutes. <laughs> Here's what's coming now. How long did it take for Jonathan to open up to you? I've got a related question, which is, so I think Jonathan, <laughs> that's, like, that's so boring. That question was so boring, no offense. Um, uh, he, my, my, like, so he comes across as, I think, a, a, a warm figure. And I recall, I lived in, in Vegas for um, a few months in 2004, and I remember seeing those signs everywhere. And Vegas has that quality of, you see uh, signs and posters for people that you haven't really heard of. It's like they're Vegas famous. Sure. And, and they just do residencies that sort of never end. And he had this sort of his signature look, which was like a headband that forced one of his eyes down and the other one up, that gave him a kind of demented, almost like crack crazed look. Like, almost. like perfect <laughs> documentary <laughs> material in a way. So, but in terms, so when, when I saw the film, I was like, okay, here's this guy that I've seen around. What came across to me was a certain sort of, yes, ego, e egocentrism, is that the word? Egoness. And also that, but that he's kind of intelligent, likable, entertaining. And so I found myself warming to him. But what was he really like? Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that you took from the movie that he is likable and entertaining. Because I, 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 you know, as, as painful as making the movie was, and of course, you know, we had our issues often, um, I really do like him. Like he is, he is from a comedic standpoint. Like his sensibility of his, his sense of humor and his sensibility. Yes, it's dark, but it's like I, I feel like when I'm with him, I'm hanging out with like someone my age or younger, and it just feels comfortable and funny. And I don't know. I just and he's he can only 
be himself. He can never, I really admire that in a person that they can never, even if they tried to be someone else, he just owns himself so fully and I really appreciate it. Um, on the other end, yeah, it was a big challenge, you know, I, I, at times, but he's human. That's what the, hopefully the movie is about to me. It's about the humanity and the motivations as to why people do things. So yes, at times he put himself before me. I don't blame him. I put myself before plenty of people. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I can, that, that's him to some degree. Yeah, I mean, I think you get the feeling, and especially towards the end, it's like, well, uh, why would I rather have yeah. one documentary than two documentaries? That makes no sense. So he evidently doesn't quite, there's a certain uh, quality of maybe what loyalty or, or something that he, he's not quite getting, right? Would you not agree? Well, yeah, yeah. Simon, what, do you have a thought on that? No, I mean, uh, yes. I mean, isn't it self-evident that he has a sort of thin concept of loyalty? Uh, I, I would agree with that. But, uh, but in maybe, his, on maybe his maybe behalf, in, sense, yeah. <laughs> uh, in his defense, again, I get it. If, and and uh, Max Maven, I think, says it in the movie, the, the magician man with the weird goatee. Um, he basically says that, like, yeah, if you knew that you only had an X amount of time to live, wouldn't you yeah. want your story out there in any way? So I, I don't blame him. Any, all the problems Jonathan put in my path as the filmmaker making a movie about him, it was a, a very painful to experience and challenging to figure out how to react to it, but I'm very grateful for it because it forced me to think outside the box and, and I'm very proud of this movie. So it was but due to him. I mean, one thing that did occur to me watching it again is that, is that looking at his expression when he was sort of telling you about the cr other crew, it, it, it does become quite clear that he was just enjoying yeah. fucking with you. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Right. Yeah. And that, that came across quite clearly to me. I think that's... To what extent was that his end? Or, oh, or just, do you think yeah. he just wanted lots of film crews, to, lots of documentaries? No, I, I think he... Abs of course he absolutely loves, like, you know... Needling? Just, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I yeah. think that's my favourite scene in the film, is when you're in the car and he's <laughs> telling yeah. you that you know, you're the second documentary and yeah. you're gonna have to wait and it's just the nakedness of his insensitivity that is, uh, it's kind of appalling but I also enjoy, I think I quite like Honesty. egomaniacs because you sort of think, well this is so relaxing because you really don't give a shit and that makes me feel less tense about whether I need to worry about what I'm saying to you. Hmm. Anyway, thank you for the session. That was, you know, <laughs> that was sort of in my head and I'm glad I could deal with that. And the, the question was to do, how long did it take for him to open up with you? I don't know that you were on a gradient of, of openness, <laughs> no. particularly, were you? No, I, I, uh, that's a question I ask myself, too, uh, and I ask myself during the making of it. It, it. I don't know if he ever truly opened up or if I got the opened up and it, and it wasn't all that good. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to say. Uh, he is a comedian. Probably a comedian first. That's how he thinks of himself. So when I ask pretty intense or meaningful questions early on, like literally he was setting up for a party that him and his wife were going to have, inviting like hundreds of people over to his house. And while he was setting up, I asked him like, Jonathan, you could die at any moment, right? Like, why are you having a party now? Like, do you think about your illness when you're doing in, in your normal life? And he just like makes a joke and like pretends to fall over dead. Like, that, he's a comedian first, so he would often deflate what I was going for, truth and emotion, with, with goofs and comedy. So I think that's kind of what you get when you're dealing with a comedian at times. Yes. But I tried. <laughs> I tried. Uh, yeah, no, and, and, uh, and in fact, the, 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 the final confrontation interview kind of um, ta yeah. takes it to that, sort of the closest to some sort of sincerity, some realness. And, and scary, you see yeah. his genuine upset, and his upset sort of sub substitutes for intimacy, I think, in some way. And, and we're, being, just to ju we're being told, how long have we got? One minute? One more question. One minute. I do want to just point Go out on. that by the end of the movie, that, that does for me what I think, well, that, that works for me, that seeing him run into that other room and tell his mom, like, Mom, we got the producer. Like, I relate to that. Like, that's a, he's a little boy in that moment. So, I don't know, I, I feel... Um, I feel like we end on a nice note, something that we truly got inside. Beautiful. Oh, I've got a yes, no, because we've run out of time. The yes, no question is, would you ever want or allow someone, you can both answer this, to do a documentary on you? No. 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 Yes, but I already did, so no. 
I'm going to say yes. And I think shame on you as documentary filmmakers <laughs> if you're going to say like, it's like saying like, you know, I'm going to make the sandwiches, but I'm not going to eat them. Come on. Come on. Lead yes. by example. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> We're available as subjects for documentaries. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks to people around the UK and Ireland. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you to Simon Chin. Thank you to Ben Berman. Thank you to Louis Theroux.